What comes to mind when you think about Jesus? Who is he to you? This is one of the most important questions that you and I will have to answer somewhere in our life. Why? Because whatever comes to mind when you think about Jesus will determine how you go about life. I know that Jesus is more than something to believe. A.W. Tozer said the following. He writes, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. And this is true for us. You see, if you think of Jesus as just a really good moral teacher or a really good example for us, then how are you going to go about life? Well, you will go about life really just trying to be a good person yourself. You'll look at his teachings and you'll go, what a good example. You know, Jesus was loving, so I should also be loving. Jesus was kind to the poor, so I must also be kind to the poor. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but that's not exactly the truth of who Jesus is. If you think of Jesus as just another historical figure, you know, along the same lines as someone like Gandhi or Muhammad, then how are you going to go about your life? Well, eventually Jesus will simply just pass into history. He will become irrelevant. He will just become another figure that we will look back on in the history pages. If you think of Jesus as a a distant, angry, far away God, then again, how are you going to go about life? Your life will reflect that belief. You see, our lives, our character, it all centers around our view of Jesus. Your relationship at this moment is a direct result of how you view him, what you think about when you think about him. But today we're going to discover this one very simple truth. We want to discover with this series of ours that Jesus is. He is greater than something, a blank, each and every week. And for this week, we want to discover this truth that Jesus, my friend, is greater than what you think. He goes so far beyond and he surpasses what our minds are able to comprehend. And there's this incredible story in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Jesus is with his disciples and he asks them this question. He asks, who do the people say I am? What do the people think about when they think of me? And in the story, they give him many different answers. They say, some say you are Elijah. Some say you are Jeremiah. Others say you are one of the prophets. Still, some say that you are John the Baptist. You see, throughout our lives, we will also be confronted with how other people view Jesus, what others think about him. Maybe you've heard that Jesus is a great moral teacher, one of many. He's just an historic, he's just a historical figure. He was a really good man. He was a really good teacher. Or maybe even you've heard that Jesus was a con man that, you know, kind of scammed everyone into believing in him. But then in verse 15, Jesus asks a second question. And this is the question that you and I will also have to answer somewhere throughout our lives. But he asks his disciples, Who do you say I am? So in essence, he's saying to his disciples, forget for a moment what other people say about me. Forget for a moment what other people think about me. Forget for a moment the picture that other people have concerning me. And he asks them this personal question. What about you? Who do you say I am? What do you think about when you think of me? And this is where Peter answers him. And Peter says, you are the son of God, the Messiah. You see, friend, somewhere in your life, you will have to decide for yourself who Jesus is. That revelation of the identity of Jesus, who he is and what he came to establish and do on earth. But the reality is where that revelation comes from for you is crucial because that leads me to our second point it's the holy spirit that brings about that revelation it's after the statement of peter where he says you're the son of god the messiah jesus answers peter again and he says peter blessed are you for this revelation you know this truth of who i am was not revealed to you by flesh and blood you know other people didn't tell you this You didn't just magically discover this about me, but he says it was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. You see, knowing 
and understanding and having a revelation of who Jesus is doesn't come from watching others. It doesn't come from simply reading books. It doesn't come from watching YouTube channels. Revelation does not come from flesh and blood. Jesus in this moment is saying, revelation comes from God himself and it is through and via his Holy Spirit. He is the one that reveals Jesus's identity to us. This simply means that it's personal. It's not just head knowledge for me. It's not just that I know about Jesus or I know everyone else's opinion or viewpoint of Jesus, but it becomes deeply personal to me. And for you, my friend, Jesus will somewhere throughout your life, he will have to become deeply personal to you. Knowing about him won't do. We need to know him. And this leads me to my third and last point for today. Jesus calls Peter blessed because of this revelation, because of this moment of clarity where Peter is able to look at Jesus and see him for who he truly is and form a, an accurate uh, perception of who Jesus is. Why? Because Jesus' identity had moved beyond Peter's preconceived ideas of him. He saw Jesus for who he truly truly was, Messiah, Son of God, the long-awaited Savior. Peter in this moment realized that Jesus is greater than what he thought, greater than what he ever thought the Messiah could be, greater than what he ever thought the Savior of the world could be. Why? Because in this moment, he's also realizing that they had thought. They thought that the Messiah would fit a a certain mold. They thought the Messiah would look a certain way. They thought the Messiah would act and speak in a certain way. And all throughout his life, Jesus was proving them wrong again and again and again, reinforcing the truth that he is greater than what we think. And it's because of this revelation that Peter was blessed because he knew God and blessed because he could then reveal that same truth to others. And the same is true for you and me today. Charles Spurgeon, a famous theologian, but he writes the following. He says, rejoice not in all knowledge. So he's saying, Don't rejoice in knowing about God. Don't rejoice in knowing a lot of information, you know, having all the facts about Christianity or theology in in the correct order. But he says, glory in this one thing, that you know Jesus and are blessed. So to conclude today, what comes to mind when you think about Jesus? If you had to fill in the blank, Jesus is what? What would you say? The fact of the matter is today, no matter where you are, no matter where you come from, but Jesus is still greater than what you think. And if you allow him today, if you come with us over these next few weeks as we gear up for Easter and as we reflect on who God is and who Jesus is, if you come with us on this journey of discovery, the Holy Spirit will continue to reveal to you more and more and more that Jesus is greater. He's greater than what you think. He's greater than what you feel. He's greater than your preconceived ideas of him. He's greater than your fears. He's greater than your failures. He's greater than your worry. And that truth is true for me and you today. Be blessed. I know that Jesus is more than something to believe. If you've enjoyed this content, make sure that you head to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button so you can see more. Bless you.